Hi everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So working some more on the hills and the water. Actually saw part of the top of a big sail on one of the sailboats, although it's uh, very close to the colors of the water, so it was kind of blended in and I didn't really realize that's what I was stitching until it was almost completed. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this should hopefully be an interesting session. As you can see, I have a ton of threads parked here. It's a confetti heavy area, so yeah. I don't think we'll be bored. I will also say that I'm not starting at zero. I've already got 231 stitches completed, so yeah. There was enough available light for me to stitch, but it wasn't great for filming, so. I was waiting until, yeah, we had better light so that you can see it well. Yeah, this time of the year, it's uh, harder to film because uh, it is dark <laughs> so much more of the day. But, uh, well, we're past the solstice, so... It will slowly start getting lighter, but yeah, like I've said before, I don't really notice the days getting much longer until we hit about March or even April. <laughs> and for us, we sometimes still get snow that late, so... Yeah, we did have the barest white Christmas. We had a little bit of snow, but it was more freezing rain, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Not the kind of white Christmas we're used to having here. Okay, that's medium length too, okay. I'll probably have to add more of this color fairly soon, my gosh. <clears throat> yeah, I hope you all had a good holiday. <coughs> I hope if you're lucky, you're still on holiday. <laughs> have some time off, yeah. That you had a good Christmas. Ours was nice. Nice and relaxed and kiddo liked his gifts, uh, his stuffed moopsie and uh, his pajamas. <laughs> yeah, he loves his onesie pajamas, so that's what we got him. His, all of the onesies he has now, he's outgrown or pretty close to it. I tell him if he grows another inch, they uh, they won't fit anymore. <laughs> He'll pop the seams. Yeah. <clears throat> and my husband bought the new uh, Mario game for the Switch. So we have something to do over the holiday <laughs> family gift so yeah we actually still haven't finished uh legend of zelda tears of the kingdom my husband is trying to collect all of the uh <coughs> he wants to collect all of the armor and fully upgrade it so he's been busy doing that yeah yeah because to upgrade the armor isn't just a case of finding it or buying it you the stuff you need are things that you get from battles, loot that you get, and yeah, some of them are like really rare and hard to get, so. Yeah, it was so funny. He was doing that and our son discovered that the face filters work on Link too. <laughs> so yeah, it was quite funny. Yeah, it's not too cartoony of a face, it still recognizes it, so. Okay. Yeah, like I said, lots of colors here. Okay, this one, I think I'm gonna carry downwards and I'll start a new one for the stuff that's up higher in this area, yeah. Yeah, so I was kind of working more horizontally and then the picture kind of just started going more vertical, so I followed it. So yeah, like I said, I don't really follow a strict diagonal. It's so. And 
And yeah, we are well past 80,000 stitches now. 81,000 over 81,500, so. Slow but steady, we will make it. Yeah, that's one reason I like to stick to just a few projects because I like to really see the progress. Yeah, there's um, there's some people I follow on Instagram, other stitchers who they rotate what pattern they're working on every day. And some of them have like, there was one who said she has over 300 uh, works in progress, which is just like, whoa, mind blowing to me. But yeah, I guess my fear would be that I would never get any of them done. And I really do like to finish things. I guess it depends, right? If you're someone who just enjoys the process more than anything, then no problem. If it makes you happy, right? But yeah, I like to have finished pieces. I said I may not be so good at finishing other stuff in my life, but at least this is one thing that I do finish. Hmm. Although, I mean, I do have some unfinished cross-stitch pieces from back when I was a teenager. Yeah, that I never finished. But they're not full coverage, and also they're paper now, right? I can't stitch from the app, and I'm really spoiled, so I don't know if I'll ever finish them or not. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there was one kit I had. I think it was Dimensions. But um, the pattern was all color and it had no symbols on it. And I'm like, I guess my eyesight was better when I was a teenager because trying to read it now is just like cross-eyed. <laughs> yeah. And without an app to help me differentiate it, yeah, uh, forget it. I'm too lazy, so. I'll just like, I have, geez, a couple of, a uh, couple of shelves full of uh, cross-stitch patterns that I collected over the years and never made. And then, like I said, they're all in magazines and on paper. So yeah, who knows? I guess I can hope if I end up with any grandkids that someone will end up with the same hobby and I can I can pass it to them although I don't know they might be like me and not want to stitch from paper either right <laughs> yeah one of my friends she uh she tried getting her girls started with uh some of the smaller freebie patterns and they did it for a few days and then they lost interest so she said ah no such luck <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I kind of got her back into it. She had done it and then kind of quit for a while, just like me. And then, yeah, when she started seeing my work on my posting pictures up on Facebook, I got her interested and I directed her to, uh, she was asking, where do you get your pattern? And I directed her to Artisy and Heaven and Earth Designs. And yeah, she picked uh, one of the free ones. And then, yeah, that was it. Now she's hooked. I think she has more patterns in her stash than me now. <laughs> Hmm. But yeah, I've often said collecting the the craft supplies and actually using them are different hobbies. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because people will be in the Heaven and Earth Designs Facebook group and say like, uh, you know, help, I, I want to start a new piece, but uh, I should be good. It's like, yeah, you've come to the wrong place if you want to tell, if you want people to tell you not to do that because you, <laughs> in those groups, a lot of people have dozens of them started. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Uh, my husband and kiddo both have the next two weeks off so we can just take it easy and relax <laughs> well 
like I say next, but it was this week and then next week, yeah. So I think I'm safe to say I probably won't get any of the peacocks, the peacock done this month. And I probably won't be finished filling in all around him either. Yeah. But uh, next month we should definitely, definitely get to him. Be working on his chest and yeah, like I said, that should go by really fast because there's very few colors in that area. Not like right here, which is very confetti heavy, so we're gonna be busy. <laughs> well, can I squeak one more? Yeah, I think I can get one more stitch out of that. Oh man, I was kind of annoyed. I, uh, I ordered Super Channel via my, my TV provider. Uh, because they have a bunch of Christmas movies and I love Christmas movies so I wanted to watch them and you know nine bucks a month to watch like you know 30 movies is pretty good actually they had more but I'd seen a lot of them and uh, yeah and then they make it sound so easy because you can add it online to your account or you can go with your remote you know on TV and enter your pin and everything they make it sound so easy. The problem is you can't cancel it that way. You actually have to phone them. It's like, oh, you jerk. So I guess they're counting on people not bothering to call them to cancel it later. Yeah, that old trick. So yeah, I was, I was a little annoyed by that, but yeah. So I, but I'm gonna put a reminder in my phone. I will call before it, it auto renews for the next month and cancel it because yeah. I was not happy about that. If I'm able to order it online, I should be able to cancel it online, I think. Yeah. But yeah, I guess they're counting on people's executive dysfunction. But I said that means next year, if I want to order it to watch Christmas movies, I may order it through um, a different streaming service. One that I can manage online, like Prime. So, yeah. I don't know whether it, they'll still have a net gain of people who didn't bother to uh, cancel it versus people like me who says, well, I won't order it from you again. <laughs> so, Because, uh. yeah, that kind of annoyed me. And what really annoyed me, too, was, like, the day after I ordered it, um, Prime had a sale where it was, like, you could get try a new channel to you for, like, two bucks a month instead of ten. I was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, it's only eight bucks, you know, it's not going to break me, but yeah, I was still kind of annoyed. <laughs> if I just waited another couple of days, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't think of it. I ordered it right before the whole Black Friday sales, and I just did not think of it that maybe they will have a Black Friday sale. In fact, I guarantee they will. They always do. Yeah. Because, well, I don't usually pay attention to the Black Friday sales because I do not go to brick and mortar stores during those, oh, I don't want to get trampled by people, right? So I avoid shopping on those days. I went once forgetting that it was Black Friday and it was like, why is there no parking at the mall? Because usually we have plenty of parking. We are really lucky that our city is really good for parking. And uh, like there's free parking basically everywhere. We don't really have parking meters. There's a park, there's a parkade or parking garage as you non-Canadians call it, and it's free and uh, for downtown. And yeah, there's just, so I'm not used to having to, you know, struggle to find a space. And I also am someone who is just fine with, I'll park a couple blocks away and walk if I have to. Might as well get my steps in and I don't feel like fighting people for a closer space. I find it's so stressful that and takes so much time that by that time I could have just parked further away and walked right so 
I'm not someone who, I'm fortunate enough that I'm not someone who needs to be close because I need to use ramps or anything. So I recognize, of course, that, that there is privilege in that, in the ability to park further away and walk. But yeah, so that's why I do that. I just do not feel like fighting people for spaces. We had once, we had to go to the mall like two days before Christmas for something which I dreaded doing, but we were obviously waiting for the space in there first. And this guy was pulling, backing out and we were waiting and this lady came from the other side and stole it. And, oh, I was so steamed. And I said, you know, that's honestly a really stupid thing to do because like, I know where your car is. I'm not the kind of person who would do anything to it, but you know, there's plenty of other people who would, right? Like if someone stole their space, you might decide to break your window or something, right? Like it's not a good idea. I mean, I wouldn't do that, but yeah, I was pretty ticked. Like, yeah, okay, Merry Christmas to you too, right? Like, oh. Like, I know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal, but yeah, it was just... I don't like when people, you know, don't follow the basic rules we were all taught in kindergarten of wait your turn, you know? Don't take something that ain't yours, you know? Oh. Ah, what you gonna do, right? Uh, yeah, there's always gonna be some people who just don't care. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I got a couple of them parked here of this, but I think nine of them are very, okay, that's somewhat, and that's a short one, yeah. Okay, so this top one I'm gonna carry over. Okay, so I'll start another one, yeah. I don't want to carry it that far, so. Yeah, it's kind of frustrated. I ordered some movies and uh, they gave me a tracking number and it tracked it and uh, up to the fact that it was leaving New Jersey and coming to Canada and then it has not been updated since and that was like a week and a half ago, so yeah. And they said sometimes the carrier they use that happens is that the package is moving, but it doesn't update on that site anymore once it gets handed over to Canada Post. Usually it does, but this one hasn't. So I'm like, yeah, eagerly checking my mailbox every day, hoping it's there. And they did say like that if it's not after, a, you know, enough time has passed, contact them and they'll, they'll send a replacement via registered mail, but. I'm hoping that it will still show up. I'll give it another week or so, and then I'll complain. <laughs> yeah, we're all kind of spoiled though, right? Because like Amazon's with their two-day shipping, yeah. Having to wait a couple weeks for something just feels like forever. Yeah, and I was telling my son, yeah, when we were kids and we ordered from a catalog, you had to wait six to eight weeks for something to show up, sometimes even longer. Yeah, I was annoyed once I ordered from a craft company online and they said four to six weeks, which was, which was fine, you know. And uh, at the four weeks, my order arrived and it turned out that they'd only had half of it and uh, the other thing was on back order. And I get that that happens, but I was kind of annoyed because, like, I ordered it online, so you guys could have at least sent me an email letting me know that you were only charging me for and shipping half my order and not the whole thing. Because one of the parts of it that I ordered was a gift for someone else, right? And, yeah, the part of the order that was just for me, that arrived on time, and the part that was the gift didn't, so I had to tell them sorry. Yeah, I ordered it that was supposed to arrive by such and such a date, but it was back ordered, and they did not tell me. So, yeah, had to give them a belated gift. Luckily, they were very understanding about it, but yeah, I was not happy. Like I said, you know, they sent me a confirmation email. You would think they could include in the email that, yeah, by the way, <laughs> this item is on back order. And I would have made plans accordingly. Yeah, so my husband's been playing around with his 3D printer. He finally got his uh, 
vent uh, the fume box or whatever you want to call it so that it will vent outside. He got that finished and uh, yeah, it works great. Yeah, because he asked me to come down and test. He said, can you smell anything? And I said, no. He said, okay, good. Then I know the fumes are going outside because he went outside to where it vents and he said, yeah, it was definitely stinky fumes there. So yeah, he did a, he did a good job and got it. So now he's been, yeah, experimenting with it. Because, yeah, the first thing he tried to print was this little boat that came pre-programmed in it. And uh, the first time he tried it was too, uh, he tried to have it print too fast. And so they, uh, it wouldn't set. And it was like he said, it looked like noodles. <laughs> Pile of tangled noodles instead of a solid piece. So he had to restart it. And so, yeah, he's got to experiment with, you have to decide between how fast you want it versus the quality and density of it and so yeah there's definitely a learning curve which is why you start with little things first before you hop into any big projects but yeah he's looking forward to making custom gears and things for his uh his unimog and other other projects and he's already had his first order from a friend yeah who uh asked if they could he can print them something and they'll pay for the supplies so yeah yeah so like it's just wild how much technology has changed just in my lifetime i wonder what other new things we're going to see that I can't even imagine it right now. Still want my Starfleet replicator though. <laughs> yeah. Every time I gotta make dinner. And I have people say, well, you know, you can order from Skip the Dishes and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but that adds up, right? I like to be able to just walk over and say, computer, tacos, <laughs> and boom, there they are, right? Mm. And especially because it does the dishes for you too in the show. You just put it back in the slot and it, yeah, it dematerializes back into the, uh, uh, what you might call it into like the raw material or whatever so it can be used again later yeah one of my friends was talking about that and said yeah i would be the annoying old person who would refuse to get into the transporter <laughs> Like, well, to be fair, I don't know if I would use it either, yeah. I mean, like somebody said, technically, is it actually you that emerges from the transporter? You know, or is it like a copy of you? <laughs> hmm. If it breaks you down on like a molecular level or whatever, yeah. Is it really you on the other side? Yeah, or somebody said there was the, the Next Generation episode where they discovered <clears throat> where, uh, oh, they, they ended up with this uh, rapid aging disease and then they found a way to reverse it. Someone's like, uh, so they just discovered like the Fountain of Youth <laughs> or the one when um, Picard and stuff, they get turned into kids and somebody's like, all they're looking for to re is to reverse it. And it's like, hey guys, you just found the Fountain of Youth. You know, that not that a good thing? Isn't that what everyone would want? <laughs> Although, yeah, I'm not sure I'd want to go far back enough to be a kid again, you know. Maybe 20, yeah. <clears throat> Lots of colors here. And then when I get a little further down, it's going to start becoming bigger blocks of similar colors so that should go a little quicker yeah mm. 
Okay, that'll be just long enough to do those four over there, so that'll work. Okay, with this color I can pack away pretty soon. Yeah, in fact, I'll do both of these uh, the two threads here, so. short little ones and then I'll pack this color away. I won't be needing it for a while. So we have a single stitch there. Okay, and then pull out one more thread and I'll pack this away. This morning I had some bigger blocks of the same color, so that's why I was able to get so much done before I, before I started filming for you all. There we go, so those two. I had a feeling that was going to come unthreaded. Just making sure it's the right thread because there are a lot very similar colors in this area yeah so I've got to be careful not to not to mix myself up Okay, so I see either way I'm going to have to do one out of order because of the way these, these threads cross each other, so that's fine. Just do this one then. So this here and this here. Yeah, because one is traveling up and one is traveling down, so sometimes it just happens. Most of the time my threads travel down, but sometimes they do travel up when it just kind of makes sense to me to do it that way. Okay. However, we'll fill in that gap pretty quick.
Yeah, it's funny. It's hard to get my kiddo to watch movies with me, except when it's Christmas movies. He loves them as much as I do, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was funny when my husband was a kid, he said that um, they were in Hungary. So in Europe, they would have the tree decorated, would be done on like Christmas Eve. And uh, he said, and the other thing was his parents would tell them that they would send the kids out of the house and that angels would come and decorate the tree. And so he said one year or whatever they were sent to another room but they had they were living in this older house that had really big old-fashioned keyholes and you could peek through them and he said he and his brother were like well we want to see the angels so yeah they they sneak up to the door and they peek through and then it's like wait a minute those aren't angels that's just mom <laughs> Yeah, they they changed that tradition when they came to Canada. Yeah, but uh, I remember there was one time because, oh, there was a a gift that, or a little tiny, one of those little um, beanie babies um, for his youngest sister, and it said from the angels. And I was like, from the angels? Like, what are you talking about? And that's when he had to explain to me that that was their old, yeah, tradition when they were kids. <laughs> And I said, yeah, like, I mean, kind of seems unfair to the kids to leave them out. I mean, that's half the fun, right? Every year, um, our son puts one of his little stuffed animals in a tree. <laughs> he doesn't always leave it there, but yeah. So he stuck his little um, Isabel from uh, Animal Crossing. It's a little, like, six-inch figure or something. Yeah, he put her in and I took a picture and so he said, well, she is a bell, so <laughs> yeah. He stuck a little stuffy Mario in once, a Yoshi. Well, when he was really little, just a toddler, he used to stick his little stuffed bunny and his blanket in the tree. And one time he's looking for it and I couldn't find it and I looked everywhere and I you know, sat down thinking, where else can I look? And then I look over and he's pulling his blanket out of the tree because he remembered suddenly that he put it in there, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, the first year, his first Christmas, he was still a crawling baby. And uh, he wasn't that interested in the tree, but he was fascinated by the tree skirt. Yeah, he kept climbing over and looking underneath it to see what was under there. Yeah, he was I'm trying to think about eight months old, his first Christmas. Yeah, so. Something like that. Yeah, he was less than a year, though, so. had this little Santa suit that he just barely fit in. <laughs> he was like popping the buttons on it, but yeah. I put him in it because I wanted to get some pictures of him. Cause yeah, it was only gonna be little enough to fit in that once. And even if he barely fit, I was getting my pictures, darn it. <laughs> stitches in this area because there are a lot of threads. <laughs> that slowly will thin them out again. There we are. Oh, 
Okay, back over to this corner again, I think. So yeah, I'm past 300 stitches, but I was past 200 stitches when I started. So it's not as impressive as you might think. <laughs> One drawback of pin stitches is there's a lot of little ends to pop through, and you don't want them to. Yeah, I'm sure glad for Pattern Keeper because, say, this stit, this symbol versus this symbol. You can see they're different, but if you aren't paying close attention, you would be easy to mix them up. Yeah. Or even if you do recognize they're different symbols, but then to accidentally grab the wrong color. That's the nice thing with this is the color key is built right in. Yeah, you're much less likely to do that. Oh, did I grab? Yeah, I did. Okay. I was worried for a second I grabbed 958, but no, I did grab 959. Although, probably, even if I did grab the wrong one, as it's a single stitch here, I don't think it would make that much of a difference because, yeah, they're really close in shade. They're just, one is slightly lighter than the other, so I think that be would be one that I could just leave it and I don't think anyone would really know. By the end I wouldn't even know. Okay, yeah, that's a bit further than I like to carry, so I'm going to tie this off. Reattach later. I think, yeah, this is long enough that I can sleeve those pieces so they won't be wasted. Okay, five and nine. Save this piece so that it would be parked it here so I could do these four with it before I tie it off that way. I didn't have to attach another thread for them. Is 
thought an end or fuzz. No, it's an end. Yeah. Sometimes little trimmed bits end up getting stuck, but yeah, that one was actually an end coming from the wrong side. Yeah, so I had one time a little fuzzy was sitting there and I kept using my snag tool trying to make it go to the other side before realizing yeah, it's just a fluff I could have picked it right off. <laughs> Wasting my time. Okay, now let's see if I remember correctly. I don't think this one is that long. Oh, actually, no, it is. I lied. Okay. All right, so I can see what I'm going to do. Could go out of order, but instead I'm going to kind of stop and start a bit. Yeah, so I mean, technically these are the same pieces I could have carried it, but I didn't want that long of a carry across the back because it's too easy to accidentally catch it and pull and distort your fabric and stitches and stuff. I have done that before. So and it does make the back a bit bulkier too. If you do that with a lot of threads in one area, then yeah. I mean, with these extremely detailed patterns, you're gonna have some bulkiness in places. It's just, yeah. No way around it, I find. Okay. Uh, oh, my goodness, pardon me. I actually did sleep well the last couple of nights, so yeah, I won't complain. So yeah, this sort of line right here is where it's the peacock. So I'm kind of stitching up to that part, but not past it. I probably won't get to it this month. It'll be next month. I don't know if we'll get all of his chest finished because that's quite a few columns wide. So, yeah, that's like over 10, I think I counted, and that's quite a lot. I consider it 60 rows. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about a lot of stitches, so. But, again, like I said before, because it's fewer colors, it does go faster, so we'll see. Yeah, my difficulty there is have to be careful not to overdo it and give myself repetitive stress pain. So I have done that before. Yeah, I kind of pushed myself once and I did 2,000 stitches in two days. It worked out too. It was like one day I did like 800 and then the other did like 1,200. But then, oh, my forearms were so sore. I couldn't stitch for like three days. So, yeah, it wasn't worth it. 
in the end it worked out to about the same stitch count plus I was in pain so yeah yeah don't do that <laughs> so yeah I have to say as much as sometimes I find confetti frustrating because it's slow going it does keep me from overdoing it Okay, did all that just so I could, yeah, <laughs> skip around with this one without leaving any gaps. Yeah, this is a longer piece, so. Okay, I'm just gonna check this other thread of this color. Yeah, this is not very long, so yeah, I can see what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I already decided that earlier, but yeah, you never know. <laughs> never hurts for me to double check that it's still going to work out.
go up to here. I'll do those this crosshairs, <laughs> like you call them, symbol up to and including that there. My goodness. I think I can get two more stitches from this here, then that will be it. Oops, rats. Oh well, I guess if it's between accidentally unthreading my needles and getting knots, yeah, I'd rather not have the knots. <laughs> I guess this made sort of a natural break point because I think this is the edge of the shore and then it goes back into water there. Yeah, and the water part is not many, as many colors so that again will go a bit quicker. So I'm thinking next session will be still working on water there and that'll be that'll take us to the end of the month and then yeah next month we'll be working on the peacock again my favorite part <laughs> There we are.
I got 26.62 completed palindrome. Okay, so we are running out of needles, but I'm going to be able to end off some threads here and get my needles back. Okay, yeah, I had a feeling this is another color I can pack away. Yeah, I'm going to be using it again for a bit. And this one, but not quite yet. Soon. Okay, and again, yeah, this one is just about, I don't need this space, so I won't bother packing it away yet, but yeah, if I was short on space in my working tray, then I would, I would pack this color away. Another one.
some ends. Okay, so since I threaded that, yeah, I am just going to set that aside for now. I will come back to it later. Instead, I'm going to head over into this corner again. So yeah, as I said here, as it heads back into the water here, there's a lot fewer colors. You can see with this color again, I'm going to have threads branching off. Yeah. I'm going to have more than one, which I don't mind.
right, so I think I'm gonna take a break here because, yeah, my legs are starting to cramp a little less, so I gotta get up and move. <laughs> that was a good idea. Try not to sit down for too long at a time. So, there we go. So yeah, almost 400, but like I said, I started at over 200, so yeah, I didn't do quite as many as it might appear. <laughs> Be nice if I could do them that fast, but yeah, I can't. But yeah, anyway, thank you so much for joining me today, and hope to see you here next time. Hey, right, thanks everyone. Bye!